yeah let's go to the let's go to the shingoon <laughs> jalen green extension man my man got jalen got three years getting 50 per oh um, they but, love all the shit out of both of them i was gonna like shingoon both of them it was kind of their faults because you know green didn't start off the season well and shingoon got injured right i mean injuries you know you can't really control mm -hmm. but um what, you know, it's just kind of crazy to see like those guys kind of get lowballed. What what, what did Shingun get? Shingun's extension was. He probably got more years. Five year eighty, yeah, five year hundred eighty five. So he got a decent deal. Yeah, so he but got not a lot, like, and, and, but not like Franz Wagner. But or, is, is, that, know, is, is that is that is that fully guaranteed? Let me see. Extension with the player option for the final season. Okay, so yeah, he has a player yeah. option now. Peep the peep the difference that they gave Jalen Green. Jalen Green got the two years. Yeah, he got Not much confidence there. He got Jalen. He got the two years plus the player option, and it's interesting because players who are young that tend to get the two years with the player option, they all got traded in the last couple of years. Yeah. Uh, Grayson Allen. Uh, he got traded to the Cavaliers in uh, twenty. No, yeah, Tayshawn. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. The James Harden trade. He got traded. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Kyle Kuzma, uh, Chris Humphreys, uh, Jerome Williams. Yeah, he got he traded to the, the Raptors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is the, that's ninety nine. Yeah. So, man, Chris Humphreys in two thousand seven, he got traded to the Mavericks. Kyle Kuzma got traded to the Wizards. So yeah. it seems like uh. Oh, Torinian Prince. My bad. I said Tayshawn Prince. Torinian yeah, Prince. Yeah. My bad. Torian, Torian. Yeah, he, <laughs> yeah, he got he Torian got he, he got traded to the to the Cavaliers. So it seems like because remember how we spoke about this before, the Rockets are not really sold on staying young that long, and we're no, hearing and we're hearing think... rumblings about Jimmy Butler possibly. And Emil Daka is not a. Co I don't think Emil Daka is a good developmental coach. To be honest with you. So you kind of need these guys to kind of like blossom into something, man. I'm not gonna lie, I like Emil Daka, but I have a lot of criticisms for the guy. Uh, have you watched the Rockets game this year? No, nah, not yet. Um, what, what are some of your criticisms? Uh, dude, his offense isn't really sexy. He needs an offensive coordinator on his bench. Holy shit! <laughs> He's said... a good defensive coach, mm -hmm. but bro, his offense is much more. I feel like it's stagnated. You see, like Fred Van Bleet one on ones, Jalen Green one on ones. I'd much rather have, you know, kind of like Shangun maybe set up some plays off the post. I would like to see a lot more handoff passes. Maybe like Fred Van Vliet play a little bit more off ball. But I, with the Rockets, I haven't really seen that in my one or two, like my two games I've watched them play. The Rockets don't really have shooters like that. No, they don't. But I, <clears throat> but I also think with like those three, your big three, you could have them flowing off of each other because i don't think their games contradict each other that much now here's another thing the rockets don't really spread the floor like that either yeah they really don't um they're not like the type uh sometimes when you the knicks kind of suffered from that too before they traded for towns that spacing yeah. it's not really about the player making three-point shots Sometimes it's just it's just about, it's about the him being a viable threat. Now nah, it's yeah. like yeah, the, him being a threat it just creates that spacing, and it seems like yeah. you know all the perimeter plays that they have that love to make the you know the little dribble moves. Uh, it seems like it's, it gets clunky in there a little bit, and yeah, they, they're like, one of these teams that suffer from that whole like, you know we're always we're always getting high draft picks, so we have to draft the best available talent. Yeah, one hundred percent. Like. I understand, like, I've seen a lot of people criticize Reed Shepard isn't getting minutes, but it's like, dog, you need to make space. When you got Tari Easton, Cam Whitmore, when you got, you know, um, Jay Sean Print, not, what's that, Jay, what's that, D Deshaun, I mean, what's his name again, bro? He's a young, he's a point guard. I forgot his name, but he's been there for a while. I'll remember him later. When you got him, you got a lot of players that you kind of need to feed, you know? Mm hmm Yeah, I don't know how they're going to feed all these guys man it's just it's they're, just you're right gonna have to make you're right they don't have the coach for that where, where's his name man jay sean tate i knew i 
Um, and I don't know why he slipped. But oh, yeah, Jay Sean Tay. Yeah, I could never say his name. Jay Sean Tay. Yeah, you're right. Jay Sean Tay. It's a very, it's a lot of words. <laughs> yeah. His alphabet soup. Jay Sean. But hey, Jay Sean Tay. But he's a guy like, you know, a lot of these mouths you have to f feed. And it's like, bro, you don't have minutes for that. And you also have to play in your veterans like Steven Adams, Jeff Green. Yeah, Reed Shepard, no. Yeah, Reed Shepard. Like, like you kind of get lost in the shuffle, you know? For them, like a lot of the lottery picks, you don't have much opportunities to really shine. Where like, let's look at uh, Jabari Smith. You look at him and you compare like his fellow two um, draft mates. Fellow three draft mates, because I think Evan Mobley was a part of that draft. Mm -hmm. If I'm not, no, Evan Mobley was part of the Jalen Green draft, my bad. So I believe it was Chet Holmgren, Paolo Benchero, and um, Jabari Smith in the same draft, right? You look at those three, you look at Paolo Benchero and Chet, they've really, they've had an opportunity from a team that like started scratch. But I think where Jabari is kind of much more, where do I fit in this? And I think that's kind of hindered his development. Yeah, it's just, and Amir Thompson, he, he doesn't shoot either. And it's, yeah, it's just, man, that's a Amin. lot of development. I think the, which one do we have? Amin Thompson, right? The Rockets? Oh, yeah, yeah, the right. He has, um, damn, the twin brothers, yeah. right? I think you're talking about the Pistons one. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They both can't really shoot. They both nah, have the both same. Both of them way. are just lengthy defenders. Yeah. They both. But like, even the Pistons. Mm -hmm. Even like Jabari, he's better off in the Pistons, to be honest with you, because there's not much of an influx of talent as compared to like the Rockets. There's a lot more mouths to feed and a lot of developments. And I don't think Emil Daka, like I said, is really a developmental coach. And I think like Steven Silas kind of failed at being a developmental coach. So the Rockets are kind of stuck in this liaison of what are we, what's our identity. And I think last season they kind of figured it out, but I think this season... Hopefully by January we're gonna see a real Rockets identity. Yes, yeah, it's, it's man, the rotations are weird. They have, but I also feel the same way about the Pelicans too. I, I'm gonna be honest. I feel the same way about some of these teams in the West, or even the East, where I'm like, ah, eh, these struggle. They struggle with an identity. I think the Rockets kind of come up with that. I think. Let's see with the Warriors because I think a lot of they got veteran like bench players. Who kind of like know how to play who kind of know how to play in the big levels mm -hmm. but these these two teams i can really think of with an identity crisis the pelicans and the rockets yeah the the rockets they're shooting guards through their their, their forward positions the three and the four it's yeah. almost like the same thing repeating even coming off the bench there's yeah. no like shooting no there's no guy that you can like have an off-ball guy who can just run around the court get himself open or get others open. Like, I think that's why, like, Steven Adams was such a key, important signing is because that's a guy that can play off the ball. He can be, like, kind of, like, the brick wall. He doesn't need the ball in order to be effective. Like, even with Steve, there's positions where Steven Adams doesn't touch the ball at all, but you know he opened a play for another player. He opened the, he opened the court, whatever, right? Mm -hmm. I think that's one thing the Rockets, that's one thing the Rockets need more of. But it's, like, you know what can what can they really do? You know I, I don't know if they're that confident in their young talents. Clearly not, because they're much more hesitant to pay. Like they're much they were much more hesitant to pay Shangoon and um, and Jalen Green because Shangoon five years is great, but let's be honest. Like within that five years, you look at Franz Wagner and his contract, Scotty Barnes, Cade Cunningham, Evan Mobley. Those guys got paid bank. Yeah, they're in the first apron right now. That's why they were hesitant yeah. to pay. They're in the yeah. first apron. But remember, the Rockets, they have they only give out team options. So yeah. Fred, I'm assuming next year they're not gonna mess with Fred. They could mess with him. They could just give him the forty four million for next season because they're gonna be way underneath this cap. But it's it's uh Oh, you know what? Yeah, they could they could give Fred his money. Steven Adams, I don't know what they're going to do with him. They have too many of the same things repeating, though. It's like these forwards that could play defense. Nobody's shooting. But isn't, like, even Steven Adams, right? I think he's on his last year's deal, right? And, I like, he's coming off of an Achilles injury, right? Or an ACL injury. So even if the Rockets were willing to pay him, they're not paying much. Mm. Like, you're not expecting to pay Miles Turner money to Steven Adams. 
Man, Miles Turner would be a good. Uh, Miles Turner. I don't think his three point shooting is that great. He's just no, I think his defense. I think a lot of people kind of overrate his three point shooting. Yeah. It's just his defense makes him really significant. And to be honest with you, his rim, their, their rim protection is not that great either. Uh, the, the, the Pacers. Yeah, Miles has struggled. Yeah, the Pacers are not yeah. really a rim protector. They're an team. overrated team. I think I highlighted that in our comments. Yeah, you, you just... know, you know, the Pacers. To be honest with you, I think the league trying to balance itself out and just kind of promote a star. A lot, a lot of the um, the 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 the, the media coverage on Tyrese last season was promotion. It seems very agenda driven last season because the second half of last guy, season. You know? Yeah, second yeah. half of last year, he had a horrible, horrible time. People questioned yeah. if he was still injured, but he started off the year hot with all his passing. He made the he made the um in season to Emirates Championship Finals or whatever. Yeah, in I think I, yeah. I, I think they they saw a way to promote a new star and get the people in that pay, in that Indiana region to kind yeah. of buy in, and they they kind of like his image. His image is very safe, but. At the same yeah. time, he if you look at his well, game, his game isn't flashy either, right? So he's no, it's like not. Man, not at all. Working man's player. Not at all. He but, does oh, he's not. not too flashy, but he does everything right. Correct. But no, yeah. I, I want to say he does everything right. He doesn't like to dribble in tight spaces. He picks up the well, ball like, early. Yeah, but I'm saying like well, how they try to present him as he does everything right. He's a man's man. Yeah, they put him on Team USA. Yeah, it was, it was uh all NBA team. It was a, it was a very promotional year, and he's young. He's one of the younger. The thing about the league right now, they're in a great area because they. One thing David Stern would have never done is let LeBron yeah. get this much shine for this long. That was one. Yeah. This, this is it's more one issue with Adam Silver. I'm like, yo, LeBron is getting too much coverage and too much because they work with ESPN. It's too much promotion. Yeah. You gotta promote the younger players. Well, dude, my thing is like, okay, like guys like Paulo Benchero should be promoted to my screen more. Oh, like yeah, yeah. He's definitely not promoted. Be like, I don't Yo, know why. This guy. And, like, I feel like even when Zion got drafted, it felt like Zion got drafted. Oh, Pelicans? Oh, who cares? Like, that's what I felt with that dude. I think what uh, Chet Holgram is another guy who can be promoted. Like, this guy could possibly make his first All-Star game. I think a lot of their first overall picks don't get hyped. Like, Cade Cunningham, I feel like most people wouldn't know. A lot of casual fans, like people who are just in your everyday street, like, minding their business. If I went up to them and say, yo, you know Kate Cunningham, they'd be like, who? What? Yeah, they don't know. And uh, that's not a good look for, like, your future stars because these are your future all-stars no matter which way you look at it, you know. The only one, like, I feel like the people who caught on fire is just by being themselves. John Morant, but John Morant did a lot of bullshit. Yeah. But even he caught on fire organically. Anthony Edwards, mm -hmm. you look at um, Shea Gilgis. Um, I mean, I don't know who else. LaMelo Ball. These guys caught on fire organically, right? And so that's what kind of got people into their aura where i feel like the nba itself they do a shit job at mass marketing players yeah and, and that comes to a, a great point because i think they're struggling with promoting the american star like they're so used to that you know what i mean like they, yeah. they're used to the charismatic you know mj kobe uh, you know I, I got a little bop to me i got a little swagger you know they're used to promoting the american star and yeah. they do not know how to promote the international star at all. And 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 when I say they don't know how to promote the international star, I'm pretty sure they, it's easy to promote them overseas or internationally. But I'm talking about to well, the American audience. The yeah. American audience, which we all know in America, the American audience sets the standard for what's cool. Let's, we cannot deny yeah. that. The American the audience... Pop culture is America. Yeah. Yeah. Americans, American audience sets the standard for what's cool, and I feel like they having a lot of issues translating, like a Luca or a Jokic, or any or any other player that's not necessarily from here, to to kind of, mm -hmm. you know, and you know, put them ingrained into like the NBA, you know, subculture or just culture overall. It's like it's hard to ingrain them. Like like you see Luca like you see Luca yeah. driving around the Michael Jordan car you know he, you know he has you know he's doing like a lot of memeable shit but it's not really translating. It's not really translating. Yeah, but I'm, like the examples I brought up are American players and they're not even getting like 
that many that much ESPN coverage. Like Chet Holgram, Paulo Benchero, um, you know, I don't know, Anthony Edwards. Anthony Edwards by himself, but I'm saying it's like these kind of guys who aren't really like who don't really put themselves out there like Chet, like, you know, Paul, Paulo Benchero, like Cade Cunningham, they're not getting that same coverage. What's happening is I've seen much more organic. Like, I think Brunson, people like him organically, right? Mm-hmm. Because of his podcast. He's kind of like funny. He's very witty. People like it. He gravitates. Anthony Edwards, the way he talks shit, people gravitate. Shea Gill just swagger. Um, I think that's how they're able to gravitate. They've created their own gravity. But I feel like the NBA machine has failed on like guys that could have been bigger. Like I think Zion, but Zion has a lot of injuries. You could probably put him, put the machine behind him. You could put the machine behind. Even Jason Tatum, they I feel like they failed to put the machine behind. A lot of guys, I feel like they have failed to put the machine behind that really True. makes them popular. Like, bro, even Trey Young, the machine was not behind Trey Young. Oh, yeah, you're what right. What made you're Trey right. Young popular was when he was in New York and they were spitting on him. He was doing all those posing. You remember? Yeah, and, the like, bowing. I remember the bowing. And then, like, I remember, like, right then, like, the WWE, you know, what they did is, like, oh, we have a show in New York. Who do we call to get, like, one of our villains over? We have Trey Young. And so, like, you see the whole Madison Square Garden cursing him out. Fuck you, whatever. Like, he made himself popular in that series. You don't see that where, like, the NBA is making them popular. Like, the fact is, outside entities are riding on what's on what these players are doing. It's never the opposite. Yeah, you know what? That's a great point you brought up because I think what it is now, and we've seen the acknowledgement, the machine is not as effective. And I think the acknowledgement was when you've seen David Stern, I mean, not David Stern, Adam Silver with Kai Sinet during that Knicks yeah. Celtics game. That was when the NBA now is starting to collaborate with the online creators. Yeah. Yeah, they, they've good. actually made a whole uh, rollout for this. They've they've announced that they actually have a whole budget for this. Uh, you remember? And, and, um, and, and, and hold on, Ky- Kyson is not the only uh, online personality that they've collaborated with. I, an- sh- I think there's another I Speed and Kevin Durant collaborated. I know that. Yeah, and and, and there's yeah. another girl. She does like online impersonations of like all the NBA players for like years. The NBA started working with her. She's really funny. Yeah. It's really organic. So I've noticed that, like, ever since last season, I noticed that. And now when I've seen, you know, Adam Silver do, like, a whole skit, he did a whole skit with Kai Sinet, like, yeah. like, when the game was over or during the halftime. So I'm noticing now they've realized, like, they don't really, they can't, they can't, like, manufacture some Popular. sort of, like, um a, t- a sort of attention to a certain player, like, as no. if. Like they're better off taking Tyrese Halliburton, having him dress up his preppy way, and put him in, put him in front of Kai Sinet. They're better off doing that than versus yeah, trying but to. Yeah, prom- Tyrese Halliburton, it's not cool. Yeah, like, you're not gonna find a kid that says, "Oh, I promise you, bro, go up to a kid right now and tell him like, who is a cool point guard to you." They're not gonna say Tyrese Halliburton. They're no, saying, but like, I, I feel like I feel like young. he doesn't have to be cool. Tyrese don't have to be cool. Tyrese just has to go viral. Like if if, if Tyrese went in front of Kai Sinet. And they had a viral moment. Everybody just knowing who he is would have been enough for promotion. They'd be like, yeah. oh, come come see Tyrese. You know what I'm saying? Like, or if Tyrese, like, you know, I don't know. Let's just say he wore, like, a funny outfit. Come see yeah. Tyrese wear his funny hats tonight yeah. versus the Celtics. You know what I mean? Like, Tyrese would show up to the game with the league fits, wearing the funny hat. Yeah. And went viral on the Casanet. Like, that's how they need to promote guys. Guys don't have to be cool. They don't have to have the Michael Jordan, Kobe, uh, uh, you know, mystique. They just have to link up with the, the right, human. yeah, with the right um, yeah. influencers, I should say. Yeah. Because you remember, I was watching a podcast. It was uh, Kevin Durant. Like, he was on the Logan Paul, and I guess Aisha Speed was also a guest. And I remember there was a viral moment where Aisha Speed's like, well, you know, Aisha Speed is kind of a loud personality. He's like, yo, what if I come to your games? Did you notice me? And Kevin was like, oh, fuck, no, I wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't know who the fuck you are. And that moment went viral. It was hilarious. Yeah, so they, it they is need more of that. Like and then yeah. they could make it a whole thing now. Now now you can have um, mm-hmm. I, I show Speed at the games. And he'd be like, yo, KD, KD. And, and then the NBA at the same time, they could plan it. They could be like, yo, yeah. let's, let's let's get KD walking out the tunnel. And there's I show Speed. They could make and that part of the game. Yeah. 
Like, they, yeah. they need to do more of that. Like, the, the players don't necessarily have to have a mystique. They can sort of, I don't want to say manufacture, like, the certain viral moments, but they could capitalize off of certain moments and recreate them. I like, remember they had, um, you know, the, those two dancing sisters that were popular for a couple of years? Uh, Charlie D'Amelio and her sister. I forgot the, of the other sister's name. They brought them over to the All-Star game where they're, like, dancing with the basketball players. So they're trying to get that kind of audience with the young TikTok generation to get behind the NBA. Like, they have been trying for a couple of years. And I think that's the best way to really put the machine behind. You know, I think the NBA shouldn't even bother with the machine, to be honest with you. I think what, what they should do is let the fans and let these TikTokers and these streamers decide, like, who is cool. And let, like, outside companies... It's not even cool. Like it's it's cool. what's organic. People yeah, like organic, organic cool. shit. Yeah. People like 100%. organic shit. They, they, there's too much it's almost like like when you go to the, the 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 food store now like there's a lot of shit mixed in with the organic you know this shit's kind of bullshit you know what i mean yeah. like when you have the organic you're like okay this tastes better you can you can see it like it's the same thing when we see anthony edwards talk to the media and sometimes he's cursing and then he makes a joke that shit is you know or says some shit off the top of his that's head awesome. we know that's organic we fuck with edwards for that it's the same thing yeah. they, this whole manufactured espn over promotion of like let's say lebron james and Bronny, that's very inor that's very inorganic yo it's, it, it's, it means it nothing yeah it goes against yeah. the algorithm in a way it's almost like yeah. people will spend more time talking about how fake that shit is versus what the agenda they're trying to push it just doesn't make Bro, any sense and look let's be honest the minnesota game the first game people want to see Bronny out there ever since that game i don't see twitter like we want to see Bronny LeBron share the court. They yeah, don't cause, care cause, anymore. Cause, cause that, that that shit was fake. That shit, yeah, was, that shit fake. was fake. That shit was and fake. And it was like, okay, it's cool for a moment, but like, give me something new. Yo, the same way they said during the elections, the presidential candidates be running bots is the same yeah. way your favorite celebrities or whatever the agenda is for certain industries, they push the bots the same way. A, yeah. a, a lot of that. Nobody ever asked, how did Bronny make the All American McDonald's game? <laughs> like yeah, nobody yeah. ever asked that question yeah. like yo what high schooler that qualified for that game got kicked out over this kid who was really should have never been in that game yeah like his whole shit is has been manufactured his whole thing yeah and it's it's it, it, it's crazy man it, it is crazy and th that that sierra canyon school that he went to a lot of celebrities send their kids to that school I don't know if they felt comfortable. I think Wade's son also went to that school. No? Yeah, but like they're not the only ones. There's a lot of people, high officials in government, a lot of people there. I'm not sure if they were comfortable with LeBron filming and having their children on camera when they they send their kids to that school for the because it's private. Like nobody will know they're going there. Like this, there's, there's a sort of um, privacy Security. that comes with with minors. And it's like yeah. to have LeBron kind of go into this school where where everyone's parents are like high ranking, you know, high net worth people to just break all the rules. Because apparently that that school has a that school has a very strict like uh, policy when it, in regards to broadcasting. They don't want uh, people knowing this high government official son goes to this school. So I don't know how LeBron somehow skated through all that and and was filming twenty four seven his son. He had a whole crew for that. Like, a lot of this yeah. Bronny James shit is manufactured. A lot of it is. But just the business side of things, I think the NBA, the NBA, and I think a lot of them are kind of in the crossfire of the new generation. Like, I'm not going to say they've done a bad job. Like I said, we can highlight many of the good jobs, like inviting the TikTokers to the All-Star game or inviting Kai Sinat to kind of, like, hang out with Adam Silver, inviting um, Actual Speed and Kevin Durant and Logan Paul, because they're mainstream. So having those guys kind of sit there and make jokes with Kevin Durant is cool. And the prime and all that stuff is cool. But I think the NBA is kind of like, I don't know. The, I think the NBA should commit all the way into like kind of the influencer era of sports. Because I think a lot of kids, man, I'm telling you, a lot of kids love that I show speed and Kai Sinat. And what they do is like, it's, it's shit that they're sitting in their rooms. And just recording shit. And people love that shit. I watch like a Kai Sinat video. It's very simple, but it's very entertaining. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, the, the key thing to take away from, like, the live streaming with Kai Sinat and, like, these, these streamers is that the... What's going on is authentic. 
Yeah. What's going on has a level of authenticity that they don't see nowadays. Like even look at the presidential candidate, even like Kamala Harris. Everyone knows her laugh, certain gestures she has. Whether yeah. wh whether it doesn't matter what side of the political spectrum you're on, you notice it. Everyone's human. They're like, ah, uh, that, yeah. that laugh is kind of fake. Like you know, oh, she changed yeah. her accent. Like people are more. They notice these things now. Like you can't or, manufacture these things anymore. It's like it's like she yeah. she she kind of in a way represents a, an old guard that used to get away with that. Or when Hillary Clinton went on the Breakfast Club and talked about like hot sauce in her purse. Yeah. Or or, or yeah. Obama. Anytime he goes somewhere, he meets with like blue collar workers. He changes accent. Then when he goes somewhere else, he would change his accent. He goes yeah. around, he goes around a bunch of brothers. He's giving out pounds like that type of stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, no one's saying it's like, you know, you got to mix a little bit of the organic with the inorganic. You know, everyone yeah. has to do that from time to time. But it's like nowadays, it's like when you give up too much inorganic, it's like people just notice it a lot more. And, and I think that's what makes like not to get too political, but I think that's what makes like people like Trump for whatever reason. Yeah, there's, there's a like, level of organicness yeah. to him where it's like, man, he's just going to say it straight off. Like, shit, they may have yeah. to they may have to film this on tape delay. Because they don't know yeah. where he's going with this. And he's going on my favorite podcast, like Joe Rogan. Or... Yeah, he's going where the people are. He's going yeah. where the people are. See, when you start going into these, like, like the platforms, like, no offense, like NBA TV, like the, these, these professionalized yeah. cable TV scripted things, everything is pre-planned. But when you, if Zion Williams goes and see Kai Sinet and they sort of ask him, like, yo, what's up with your baby mamas? You know this shit. This interaction is way more organic. Everyone's thinking that. Yo, Zion, what's up with the, what's up with you and the hoes, man? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, these are more organic interactions. Yeah. Those, those, that's what's gonna make Zion's profile. You know, surprisingly, it'll make it increase because they'll be like, oh, look at that viral moment. Remember Zion? Da da da. Like, these are like the types of conversations. It's not through no like, oh, I'm sitting down with like Ja Morant did, uh, with ESPN. Oh, my mental health. Like, what the fuck kind of bullshit is that, man? He might as well yeah. have sat down with, like, um, Shannon Sharp. He might as well have sh sat down with Shannon Sharp. Shannon just pulled Maybe out the Shannon made a big pivot. Yeah. yeah. Like, he might as well have Like, when Ja Morant had the gun incident, he might as well have sat down with Shannon Sharp. And Shannon be like, Ja, what the fuck are you doing? He might as well have sat down with him and just straight up asked him like that. That way, He would have yeah. been better off than that whole manufactured... They they ESPN made Ja Morant sit in like a, a clinic. It, it looked like I a mean, doctor's office. And then he yeah, talked about mental health. I'm like, yo, yeah. they made this dude a victim? I was like, bro, you're <laughs> wilding by yourself. Ain't nobody making you wild out. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then he had the Nike logo. If you notice that 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 was kind of like a Nike ad, low key. He had the yeah, make sure Nike the Nike trying logo. to save their own ass and their athletes' ass, you know? Yeah, but they were low key pro getting promotion too. Like there was like a little Nike ad. In that whole like yeah. Jalen Rose interview, and he made Jalen Rose look stupid. Jalen Rose is a person that he comes across as authentic. You know, he, yeah. he works for ESPN, so they kind of gotta like help out, you know, manufacture yeah. things. But that that softball interview was horrible, and it made him look dumb because he did the gun incident. And nobody again. remembers it. Like I don't even remember watching it. Yeah, but you know, what's so crazy, he made Jalen Rose look stupid because he had the second gun incident. So he's sitting there with Jalen Rose talking about my mental, my mental. And then all of a sudden, your mental, yo, you you on camera smiling, pulling out the gun again. Like, come on, yeah. bro. Yeah. It's like people read bro. through all that. You know, there, there, was a, there was an era where this worked. Like, like the boomer generation or whatever, or the generation after them, it worked for them. Bro, it worked. Even in the 2000s, it worked with the decision and shit. But now it's like, who cares? Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, like, like, oh, LeBron doing the decision. That can never happen today. That shit Nobody is would mad give a inorganic, shit. bro. Nobody would give a shit. It's like, you mean to tell me you, you don't know where you're going by now? You need to sit down with TV cameras and do all this extra shit? Yeah, all I need is, well, should give me the notification and I'm moving on with my life, you know? Word. Like, this is, <laughs> this is, this yeah. is it, man. Like, this is enough of this bullshit. Even Woj got sick of it. Woj probably got sick of this shit. I wouldn't be shocked if he never talks about the NBA again, ever in his life. If someone <laughs> asked him, like, oh, do you... Was? Yeah, like, yeah. Woj would be like, oh, I didn't even know who won the NBA championship last year. Like, I wouldn't be shocked. Yeah, he just, like, fucking in the middle of nowhere. Nobody knows. Nobody cares. Yeah. Don't bother like, me. Fuck off. 